Hey guys, today's video is sponsored by Dollar Shave Club. Head to dollarshaveclub.com slash true to get your daily essential starter set for just five bucks. <clears throat> I hate laugh tracks. I think they're annoying, unnecessary, and honestly, I find them to be kind of an insult to the viewer's intelligence. It's like the show doesn't trust you to know when to laugh, so they have to basically hold up a big sign after every joke and say, look, that was joke, it's time to laugh now. But then at the same time, it also kind of feels like a lack of confidence in their own jokes. Like the writers know that these lines aren't that funny, so they have to like peer pressure you into laughing because listen to how much these other people are laughing, you should be laughing too. Most of all though, I hate laugh tracks because as a viewer, when I hear the sound of canned laughter, I am completely taken out of what, in my opinion, should be an immersive experience. I wanna watch a show and feel like a fly on the wall during a realistic human interaction, and yet a laugh track serves as a constant reminder that these characters whose lives you're trying to get invested in are not actually characters. They're just actors, acting on a stage in front of a live audience that reacts to every joke like they just woke up from a long coma and this is the first joke they've heard in 20 years. Closeness, schmoseness. There was three of us for crying out loud. <laughs> in addition to being an auditory distraction, laugh tracks also mess up the flow of every scene. Even if you remove the actual sound of the laughter, it's still evident that these conversations have a very unnatural rhythm. Get one yourself. Ooh, somebody's been taking bitchy pills. God, he's an ass when he drinks. Well, he's an ass when he doesn't, you just don't hear it. Line, long pause, line, long pause. I've never in my life had a conversation with that cadence. It's just not how people talk. Probably the worst thing about these laugh tracks is that they don't always correlate with the quality of the joke. Every response seems to indicate the same level of hilarity when Here's the thing, some jokes are just better than others. I don't expect every line to elicit this room-wide eruption of laughs and cheers, and I don't hold it against a show if a joke doesn't make me audibly laugh. But when a throwaway line is followed up by several wasted seconds where I'm just waiting for the next joke, and then it happens again and again and again, I get impatient and I don't wanna watch the show anymore. These episodes are about 22 minutes long and it feels like I'm only getting maybe 10 minutes of actual comedy. And that's when my brain hatched an idea, exactly how much of an average episode of Friends is just laughter. What percentage of each episode's 22 minute runtime is wasted by a glorified sound effect? And then to take it one step further, how many jokes are there in an episode of Friends compared to an episode of, let's say, The Office? Obviously quantity and quality aren't the same thing and one good joke is better than a hundred bad ones, but in this case I do think quantity is a pretty good indicator of overall writing quality. So I had to know. I had to get to the bottom of this. But how? And then I remembered I have a YouTube channel and I can do stuff like this, so. Now keep in mind about 90% of this video is simply gonna be opinion based. I may present a lot of what I'm saying as if it were fact, but what most of it comes down to is simply personal preference. So let's start with The Office. The Office is my favorite show of all time. I'm a bit of a basic bitch, so no, I'm not talking about the British version nor the Japanese version for that matter. I'm talking about the American Office. Because here in the USA, we may not be the first at doing stuff, but I'll be damned if we aren't the best. The Office combines everything I want in a comedy show. Again, personal preference. Um, it's hilarious, it's quick, but there's also a lot of depth to it. Characters develop deep, meaningful relationships that have ebbs and flows and give each episode more of a purpose, uh, particularly in the first three seasons with the back and forth between Jim and Pam. More than anything though, I love the way The Office is directed. You can tell there's so much deliberation involved in setting up the perfect shots, which is something that may seem small, but I think the movement and position of the camera can contribute so much to the the tone of a scene, as well as even serving as a joke in its own right. For example, in the season two episode entitled The Carpet, after it's been established that someone took a dump in Michael's office and no one can go in there because it smells so bad, Michael has a talking head bit where he kind of rambles about how this is like his fear factor audition. Eventually, he can't stand it anymore and starts to rush out of the room, but it's at that moment that the camera zooms out 
to reveal that even the cameraman didn't want to be in that room. It's a small detail, but it was enough to make me chuckle and feel smart for noticing it. But I'm rambling, I love this show, I could talk about it for hours, but the title of this video isn't why I like The Office, it's The Office vs. Friends, so I will try and get to the point. How many jokes are in one episode of The Office? Now, no scientific endeavor would be complete without taking an educated guess beforehand, so here's my hypothesis. I'm gonna say that an episode of The Office averages 140 jokes, which is roughly one joke every nine seconds. On the other hand, I'm gonna guess that an average episode of Friends contains about half that. Let's say 80 jokes, or uh, one joke every 15 seconds. In addition, I'm gonna guess that approximately three and a half minutes of every Friends episode is just laughter. And I'm also gonna guess that roughly 7% of you just clicked off the video when I started rambling about math. So let's speed this up a bit. For The Office, I chose season five, episode 14, Stress Relief Part One. This episode is near and dear to my heart. The opening scene alone is an absolute work of art. Dwight, for awareness reasons, intentionally starts a fire in the office to see how prepared everyone would be in that situation. Which is funny enough on its own, but then he has this self-righteous attitude throughout the scene while everything deteriorates into chaos, led by Michael, who immediately puts his safety before everyone else's. There are so many hilarious details like Kevin going back to break into the vending machine, Angela hurling her cat into the ceiling, and Stanley ultimately having a heart attack as Dwight explains that this was all a test. From start to finish, it's beautiful, and there are 41 jokes in it. After the opening theme, the next scene is a meeting between Michael, Dwight, and two corporate higher-ups. Uh, halfway through the scene, Michael casually gets up and sort of waltzes over to the other side of the table, trying to subtly switch his role in the situation, and then starts lecturing Dwight. There are 16 jokes in this scene, three during their car ride back to the office, and 11 in the next scene, where Stanley comes back to the office, and Michael offers him a wheelchair, quote, until he's back on his feet. I'm going to die. After a commercial break comes one of the greatest scenes in television history, the CPR training scene. If someone asked me, hey Drew, I want to get into comedy writing, where do I start? I would say, I don't know, I just make YouTube videos, but I would tell them to study this scene. I don't even know where to start with this, so I'll let Steve Carell set it up. We found ourselves on the less prepared side of things when Stanley had his, when his heart went berserk. And I knew exactly what to do, but in a much more real sense, I had no idea what to do. So I thought we should have a CPR training class. So this woman has been hired by corporate to teach the office CPR. Michael instinctively volunteers Stanley, you know, the guy who just had a heart attack three days ago. But then after the rest of the office starts to express concern, he decides that the boss should go ahead and show everyone how it's done. Okay, too fast. The instructor has to try repeatedly to get things back on track. No, it's... Uh, 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 staying alive, okay. yes, staying yes, yes. alive. You were in the parking lot earlier, that's how I know you. Oh, and Creed. Fucking Creed. He has two lines in this entire episode, and they're both hysterical. Check for an organ donor card. If he has one, we only have minutes to harvest. He has no wallet, I check. This scene is so well written, the way everything slowly gets more and more heightened, the way each character progressively gets more involved. It's fantastic. And there are 37 jokes in it. So after Dwight destroys the very expensive CPR dummy, he and Michael are once again forced to go meet with David Wallace in New York. This is a short scene with only five jokes. We then cut back to the office where Jim, Pam, and Andy are watching a movie he downloaded illegally, which doesn't exist outside of the show. So props to the producers for actually shooting clips from a fake movie where Jack Black falls in love with Cloris Leachman. I counted nine jokes in this scene, eight in the next scene where Dwight issues his statement of regret, I state my regret. And another eight when Jim, Pam, and Andy finish the Jack Black movie. The episode ends with Michael leading a relaxation exercise, which, you guessed it, is not very relaxing. There are 28 jokes in the scene, and the episode is over. In total, I counted 166 jokes in 21 minutes, which is only slightly higher than my hypothesis. If you guys want to double check my math, go for it. I also tried to be as unbiased with this as possible. I included punchlines that didn't make me laugh, but I recognized as having meant to be a joke. If I refuse to tally jokes that I don't think are funny, then why the hell am I even doing this, you know? Besides, this is science. So now let's transition over to friends. Controversial opinion alert. 
I actually like Friends. Now, if I hadn't watched it with my mom growing up and didn't have a little bit of nostalgia for it, I'd probably feel differently, but I think it's a pretty okay show. It's got likable enough characters, even though they're all mostly reliant on pretty basic stereotypes. Uh, Rachel likes to shop, and Monica likes to clean, and Phoebe's wacky, and Chandler's sarcastic, and Ross is awkward, and Joey likes to fuck. But five out of the six actors are good, and the writing is usually fine, uh, with the exception of the occasional awful joke thrown in from time to time. Anybody know a good Taylor? You need some clothes altered? No, no, I'm just looking for a man to draw on me with chalk. <laughs> As far as the laugh track goes, I can forgive shows like Friends for having a dated format because, well, the show premiered almost 25 years ago. It's not really dated if it literally is dated. And that's just what sitcoms were like back then. It was a standard. I'm much less understanding of shows that have debuted in the past decade that rely on this format. Originally, this video was gonna be The Office versus The Big Bang Theory, AKA the world's worst show. But I felt like that would be too easy. It's like making a video on Lele Pons. Like, we all know she's bad. I don't know anyone who actually likes The Big Bang Theory. And honestly, watching multiple episodes for research purposes just sounds like a nightmare. So I ultimately decided on Friends because it is a show that people generally enjoy. It's just, I think, sometimes a slave to its own format. There are moments in every episode where I have to fight the urge to incrementally skip forward past predictable back and forth, scenes where you know what the next line is gonna be, but you gotta wait for the audience to calm down so they can say it, but because of all this anticipation that's built up, now that line gets the enormous over-the-top applause. It's very formulaic, and that is the exact phenomenon that led me to wanna make this video in the first place, so let's get into it. How much of a typical episode of Friends is just laughter? Funny story, I wasn't sure which episode to choose here, so I went on IMDb to see the highest rated. Um, the second highest is the one where everyone finds out. And I was like, oh, I remember that one. That's a good episode, I'll do that. And then I realized, holy shit, this just happens to be season five, episode 14, which is the same as the, the off, so this is a perfect comparison, and I will not listen to anybody who tries to dispute that. Yes, it's all coming back to me now. This is definitely one of the best episodes. The basic synopsis is, uh, spoiler alert, uh, Chandler and Monica have been secretly dating for the past like 15 episodes, and only Joey knows. Rachel and Phoebe find out because they see Chandler and Monica having sex, but rather than confront them, they try to mess with them by having Phoebe flirt with Chandler. It goes back and forth until it all climaxes at the end of the episode. They kiss, Chandler freaks out, tells Monica he's in love with her, the crowd goes, woo! And End of episode. Yes, that was a significantly shorter synopsis than the one I did for The Office, but I realized I didn't want this video to be like 90 minutes long, so gotta cut corners somewhere. In this episode, I counted 121 laughs, which is surprisingly high, actually. I definitely way underestimated the Friends writers, but I also way underestimated the amount of time the audience reactions would take up. My guess was three and a half minutes, not even close. Now I will say I included scene transitions in this, not the theme song, but the silly little stings they play in between scenes because I felt like these are as much of a waste of time as the laugh tracks. But anyway, after isolating these two things, I was left with five minutes and 20 seconds. Over 25% of the episode has no dialogue in it, no substance at all. It's just audible filler to pad the episode in between jokes. Side note, if you guys wanna double check this number and see what an entire episode of Friends looks like without any dialogue, I will be posting that video on my Twitter, at Drew is Gooden. It's kind of hilarious actually, and I feel like even if you've never seen this episode of Friends and just have a basic understanding of the characters, you can completely understand what's going on without hearing a single line of dialogue. Now, for the sake of being somewhat thorough, I went ahead and did the same thing for one more episode of each show, the first episode of season two, and got pretty similar results. I counted 119 jokes in The Office and 96 in Friends. I'm gonna guess that these numbers are a little more typical of what an average episode of each show is like, uh, whereas the season five, episode 14s of each show are more an outlier, like the best of each show, but still the results are comparatively pretty similar. All right, so we've We've counted the number of jokes, we've isolated the laugh track, and used science to determine that The Office is a much more comedically efficient show than Friends. So, the only question to answer at this point is, does it really matter? And that's entirely up to you. Efficiency is a term I've thrown around a lot in this video, but it's important to say that it's not the deciding factor when it comes to comedy, because comedy isn't math. 
Comedy is completely subjective, and I'm not here to tell you that you should like one show more than another because there's more jokes in it. The whole point of this video was just to incorporate a small bit of math into a non-mathematical experiment. But at the end of the day, just watch whatever makes you happy. If you like Kevin Can Wait, then watch it. If you only like Disney Channel original movies, then watch them. Even Camp Rock 2, which was an objectively disappointing sequel. But whatever you do, don't let someone tell you what you should like, especially not me, because I just spent the past two weeks of my life voluntarily doing math. What the fuck do I know about comedy? The perfect ending. Great job on the video, Drew. Oh, thanks, Mr. Narrator. Uh, yeah, it was nice to not have to be on camera for a change. I grew out my beard. <laughs> yeah, you gotta get rid of that. I've got a surprise for you, though. Check under your chair. You mean like how Oprah does? Yeah, I guess. Oh hell yeah, razor. I'm gonna use it right now. Wait, Drew, don't forget about the shave butter. It's so soft. This is way better than the butter I normally shave with. All done. As hairless as the day I was born. Yeah, you look great, but what's that smell? Oh, uh, I haven't showered in over a week. Is there a reason? Because I didn't have to be on camera. You know, normal people don't wait until they're gonna be on camera to forget about it. Uh, I got you covered. Check the box. There's more? Wow. Three one wipe Charlie's to clean my tush and lavender scented body wash to clean the rest of me. Thanks, Mr. Narrator. I look like a million bucks which is probably how much you had to spend on this box, right? Nope, just five bucks, because I went to dollarshapeclub.com slash Drew nice. and used your credit card to have it shipped straight to your door. Kind of lessens the gift when you say you used my money to buy it. Drew, we're the same person. Oh, duh. <laughs> all right, well, can you just sit there and look pretty while I tell people more about Dollar Shave Club? Which is your go-to place for all your grooming needs. It's not just razors and butt wipes, people. They even have toothpaste, hair gel, moisturizer. You'll never have to leave your house again. Good, because I don't want to. Uh, thank you so much to Dollar Shave Club for sponsoring today's video and helping me turn my life around. And I also want to thank you guys so much for ordering as many shirts as you did. Uh, as a lot of you know, I announced my merch in my last video. Got a little Stinger shirt, Road Work Ahead shirt, got Pants shirt, uh, got my usual uh, Drew Gooden products. Hopefully I got to see a lot of you guys at Playlist. Um, I'm recording this before Playlist, but posting it after, so I can't say how it was because I, uh, I haven't experienced it yet. Um, but hopefully uh, I got to see a lot of you guys there and it was fun and I didn't like shit my pants on stage in front of everybody. I really hope that didn't happen. All right, little stinkers, have a great week and I will be back uh, on this channel with a new video as soon as humanly possible. Bye. Uh, side note, post video hot take here. I think David Schwimmer is the best actor on Friends and I'm not being sarcastic. His biggest detractor is often that he's too emotional or you know, some people might describe him as kind of a little bitch, and that's 100% true, but he's really convincing in expressing it. His physical comedy is so underrated. The way he moves his body, his facial expressions, his timing are so good. These types of sitcoms were made for people like David Schwimmer. I think his talent just gets overlooked because Ross can be such an annoying character. <laughs> but next time you're watching the show, and I know this is asking for a lot, but take your eyes off Rachel's exposed nipples for a few moments and you might gain an appreciation for someone you thought you could never appreciate. You go, David. Anyway, just a tangent that wasn't really related to the video, so I threw it in at the end. Thank you again so much for watching, guys. Be sure to like and subscribe, and let me know if you wanna see more videos like this or if you prefer my usual format. This was really fun to make, so I'll probably do more whether you like it or not, but it's still good to ask. All right, see you later, guys.